What is a parenting technique used on you as a child that you will never use on your own children? <laughs> Refusing to admit when I'm wrong. My mom once literally won't admit she was wrong about a simple math problem and used because I'm the mom. That's why I want my kids to know that everyone makes mistakes. I tell them when I'm wrong. I tutor my BFFS kid in math and science. I will never forget the day I screwed up, got the wrong answer, said I got the wrong answer, and apologized to her. She had the most shocked expression, until her mom explained that kid probably never heard an adult in a position of academic power admit they make mistakes, and apologize for them. Kid and I then had a Luang discussion over how adults also make mistakes and should, therefore, admit said mistake and rectify it. Apparently, that was her turning point in math. It didn't bring her to tears anymore. She still giggles like a loon, if she catches me in error. It's become our inside joke now. TL. Doctor adults who are never wrong can go frick themselves. <laughs> Showing worry by getting angry. Something bad would happen skinned knee, tripping and falling on your face, etc and instead of fretting over it, wringing hands, simply taking care of business, etc my mom would start yelling and assigning blame. It really fricks with you as a kid. Like I just sprained my ankle, why am I being screamed at for it? Did I do something wrong? Is spraining my ankle a crime? Does she hate me? Am I stupid and incompetent? Turns out, she was just genuinely scared and worried. But that's not how a young child interprets it. My dad did that sometimes too, and once he explained it to me. Not saying it is the same thing for you mom, but in my dad's case this is what he told me, that whenever I got injured his immediate reaction was worry, and then this worry manifested itself in anger, because he wasn't there to help me or protect me. That is not that he was mad at me in particular, but he was mad at the situation as a whole me getting hurt, and because I was there he took this anger out on me. Make fun of my hobbies, because I didn't like what they liked. I'm nearly 30 and still don't feel comfortable discussing my passions with them. So, my co-worker is planning to have kids and she says, my dad didn't let me listen to music he didn't like. It was terrible, my kids are going to be able to listen to whatever they want, and when she hears a relatively new pop song she says ugh this is just terrible. Like I'm actually in pain listening to this. If I ever catch my kids listening to this. Artist's name. I'm going to toss their speakers out the window. Only good music in my house lol she doesn't see the irony at all. Comparing you to another person's kid, and expecting that it will make you somehow better. I was always compared to our family friend's kid who did significantly better than me in just about everything. Right? Same here. Why can't you be like so and so? I remember one time I had a friend over. After supper, my friend grabbed a washcloth and started wiping down the kitchen table. My mom goes oh my god, would you look at that? She is so helpful. Why can't you be like that? So the following day after supper I grabbed a washcloth to wipe down the table. My mom grabs it from me and says don't do that, you won't do it right. Just go in the other room lol. Whatever. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Every time one of my pets died, my mom would get mad when I started crying. She would say, see, this is why I don't ever get you any pets, because then I have to listen to this mess. It was like I wasn't even allowed to be sad. Ruling my fear, breaking literally every promise made to me, since I was 10, never letting me have any spending money. The money thing might be a little controversial, but it would teach me to budget better than not even letting me see any money I earn. As someone with a December birthday I agree with no money thing. Trying to plan out a year's worth of clothes and shoes for Christmas money is hard. Asking for a video game and not realizing you need to ask for a second controller first and waiting an entire year to play with siblings is hard. Doing chores for neighbors and having your cashew taken away is hard. It fosters a culture of panic and fear and spending it all. You hoard things. You hide things in the vents to keep them. It sticks with you, and it's hard to get over. Isolation and the prison cell technique. The you won't be punished if you just told us the truth lie. The you can never regain our trust, ever trick. So, some explanation. 
My parents believed that removing all distractions would make me a better student. That meant that during the school year my room consisted of a bed, a bookshelf empty, a desk later with computer, but no keyboard and a closet of clothes. Anything and everything else was removed toys, books, etc and the lock on the door disabled. My room was subject to prison style searches for schoolwork with bad grade slash stuff I didn't want to show them slash stuff I shouldn't have like books, games, etc and did have to clean up the mess. Also I would be searched, sometimes so far as to be frisked, and have my backpack dumped on the floor where feed then pour through whatever fell out. Also, I was isolated media wise too. No TV, no video games, no music with lyrics during the school year. The intent was, if I was so bored, that I was going nuts and randomly decide to become a straight A student, to save my own sanity. This partially came about because of the latter two points. 1. Tell the truth now, and hide it, until they find out at the exact same freaking punishments. No matter what they said, no matter how much they said well, well not punish you, if you come to us first, that shoot was a fucking lie. And for the trust thing, even when it go months making an effort, to be the most honest kid on earth, it didn't matter. Fee bring up stuff from last year. Fee bring up stuff from the year before. Hell, I'm 30 and moved out, and mom still reminds me of shoot I did, when I was 11. There was a lot more, but those are the big ones that avoid like the freaking plague. Using food as a reward or punishment. It's such a common parenting technique, but a bad one. When kids associate food with emotions, they are much more likely to be overeaters, have eating disorders, and become overweight. Emotional eating is never a good thing. On the other hand, my parents did not reach me anything about health or nutritional at all, and let me eat whatever I wanted, when I wanted. I grew up with bad binging habits, and used food to cope with emotions. Still fighting it to this day. I will definitely make sure I teach my kids a healthy, balanced life. I will make them clean. I admit I'm kinda spoiled mostly, because my mom was impatient. She rather have had chores done right and fast as she just did it than let me help out with chores. This is why I'm kind of a disorganization mess now as an adult. Emotions were seen as a negative. Upset about something, I would be told don't be upset. I was punished for crying at a movie once. If I spoke out I didn't like something I would get made fun of. I've wondered why I'm so emotionally cold as an adult and pretty sure my upbringing is why. About a month ago I was in our brand new car with a cup of soda, and my dad was tickling me not sexually or anything on my side, which I hate with a passion, so he does it a lot, because he thinks it's funny, so I can't be mad. Of course, as I was trying to shy away from him, I spilled the cup. He doesn't notice, but I'm freaking out, because he can get very angry quickly, and I knew what I had to tell him. As I was trying to blurt out what had happened, he kept interrupting every syllable I said with a scream. This went on for about 5 minutes as I got more and more scared and freaked out, because I knew he would be incredibly upset. When I finally managed to say what I had to say, he of course started screaming at me about how I was irresponsible and childish, immature, and too old to be pulling this kind of shoot, and something inside me just broke, and I started sobbing for the first time in a year. My younger siblings in the backseat started laughing and calling me a crib before about 10 minutes, which just made me sob harder. I wanted to go home, but my family wanted to walk around a store, so I spent an hour crying inside a minutes, while they pretended like nothing had happened. It might seem trivial, but in the moment it was the most stressful thing ever, knowing he was going to explode about the soda, and being in suspense for the moment it was going to happen, and being talked over for a long time like I wasn't important, ridiculed was just the breaking point of a long line of jokes, and the wonder why I only ever seem angry at them. If I show emotion, it's something to be mocked, apparently. Making the older child wait to do something maturity related milestones like getting a pocket knife, learning to shoot a BB gun, stay home alone etc, and then caving under pressure to let the younger sibling try, just to keep the peace in the house. I, the older sibling, turned out okay. I have some degree of patience and restraint. My younger brother on the other hand is the kind of person who cannot wait for something he wants. Instant gratification is all he knows. He's dead broke, and going through 12 step for addiction, and I'm quite sure that never waiting for anything growing up is part of it. 
using sarcasm as day-to-day -day communication method, using humiliation and shame, name-calling. One parent would never ask about school, or how things were going, she just outsourced all of it to her shooty husband. The step-parent would throw my old-fashioned heavy hardcover books at my head if I got anything wrong on homework that he insisted on scrutinizing every night. He rarely missed when I started lying and saying I had no homework, since bringing it home meant beatings no matter what, my grades fell, and then I got beat for bad report cards. Big surprise, I dropped out and got my jet and then started but didn't finish college. I did go back and get a certification in my field. I swore I would never treat my kids like they should know everything and I would never shame or abuse them for being kids. My kids can and do tell me when they have trouble and we discuss why it happened, how to learn what they missed, how to get the grade up and they both love school. They know it's okay to make a mistake, what matters is what you do when you realize there's a mistake. One is headed to college he is taking college classes while in HS and the other is headed to a trade school or college has still trying to decide. My dad would get as drunk as possible and beat the ever living shoot out of my mother in front of my brother and I so that we would know not to disobey him. When he started to mellow out, he stopped being so physical and turned to verbal abuse. I grew up with the idea that I was a worthless piece of shit who deserved to die and suffer and that my mom and brother's suffering was my fault. I would never and will never do that to any child I look after, whether they're mine or not. Shit's fricked up, man. Expecting perfection. It's a great way to give them an inferiority complex and it's one of the main reasons I stopped trying hard in school. Edit, I really feel y'all. I'm sorry that a lot of you guys had to go through this too. It's a bad combination of compliments and disappointment that could either wind you up until you're a mess of a perfectionist or break you down until you've given up on trying to excel or a combination of those and maybe you're also afraid to try anything new or get too far out of your comfort zone of what's secure, what's working, because whatever you do it has to be done well and new things risk messing up what you've got going, or add to the turmoil, if you haven't gotten everything going yet. I feel like my story is applicable to a lot of y'all's replies to this, so I'll just put it here. I got both overwhelming compliments from my family and punishments for not meeting their expectations. The disappointment was real. I was in gifted classes in school, everything was easy. I only ever got one B in elementary school and everyone was always praising me for how smart I was. Then I started going to a college prep school and math classes mess me up my strength as in the arts, languages, and maybe science. Anything but math. I started making C's, even though I was trying my best, and I was constantly grounded, because obviously I wasn't trying. I evidently couldn't be putting any effort into it at all, because I'm smart enough to have gotten an A, if I'd wanted to. What that taught me was that, even if I'm trying I'll still disappoint my parents somehow, so what's the use trying, when I'll get the same reaction from them if I stop. It was easier to pretend I could be perfect, if I wanted to, stop trying to understand math, fail, go to summer school, and then pass the year anyway, and I'll act like I cold been 100% perfect if I tried. Who knows, maybe I cold f I failed almost every math class from 6th grade to 12th on the first go around. I didn't have a single summer vacation, where I didn't do schoolwork studying ahead or summer school, and I was never allowed to join any sports or clubs, because I didn't make the grades my mom wanted, which combined with my nerdiness and shyness meant I had almost no friends and basically nothing to put on college transcripts. Everyone still tells me I'm the smart one of the family, but I'm out of school and college is on hold, because I can't afford to spend the time slash money. I can practically feel their disappointment in the air, whenever the subject comes up, I avoid talking about it at all costs now, and I have an inferiority complex, that infects most aspects of my mental outlook on life I'm beating it back, but it's a process I wish hadn't been necessary. Of course I'm asked it, but I haven't yet gotten the balance of I'm smart, and I can do this. I've got the first one down in my mind. I'm proud of my IQ, my ASVAB score, my creativity, all that. But I'm stuck on the second one and my tendency to procrastinate helps that insecurity out and lets me avoid taking leaps in life that I may or may not be better for taking. 
pulling the I said, so slash him the adult card, and not listening to reasoned responses. My mum still does this. Im 20. If I don't want my theoretical and highly unlikely kids doing something, I best be prepared to explain why. And if they come up with a reasoned reply about why they should be allowed to do the thing, or why they're right, I will take it into account. My parents used to be willing to discuss things like that when I was in middle school and high school. We could have discussions about anything. Then I went away to college, and when I got back for winter break, that was gone. After that, my dad took any differing opinions as a personal attack and would scream, stomp around, and threaten to kick me out. I don't know what happened in those 10 weeks, but it was like Jekyll and Hyde. So I stopped talking to my dad about anything. That worked for a few years, but then he started following me around, making fun of me, nitpicking whatever I'm doing, making me stop what I'm doing to listen to him tell me that I should be doing whatever it was I was doing before I stopped to listen to him. Anyway, it'll be able to move out around the beginning of next year, and it can't come soon enough. My mom used to make me stand in front of mirror and say I hate myself over and over if I told her I hated her when I was mad as a kid did it. Hey Reddit thanks for being supportive, but I just wanted to put it out there that my mom is usually a shy sweet lady she had been going through a tough time back then when her husband had been physically abusing her, so I don't blame her at all, it's just something I won't do to my kids. My mom never respected my privacy and secrets and still doesn't, which resulted in a very strained relationship between me and her. But it also resulted in me never trusting anyone, including my BF of 4 years, because they can always betray me like my mom did and tell my secrets to other people, because that's what all mothers do. He is also not a very private person. So it has been hard for him to keep so many things private as I want to. It has had such a big effect on me that even now I can't really trust anyone fully. I will never do that to my children. If they tell me something in confidence, I will sure as hell keep it a secret for them. My dad liked what he called reality parenting. Shielded me from nothing. Told me all the bad things that happened in the world. Didn't let me have any fun kid dreams like growing up to be a rock star. As an adult I'm incredibly pessimistic and desensitized. I don't want my daughter to grow up naive, but if right now she wants to be a princess, she'll be fine. IDK man. My parents did a lot of shoot that now. As a parent, I'm like WTF. The all star list one. Literally ignoring me, because my brothers had serious issues that were always more pressing. 2. Not doing anything to shield me from sibling abuse. My brother had violent oppositional defiant disorder, and I was targeted unfairly, probably because we were also really close. 3. The expectation for me was that I would grow up, get married, have a lot of babies, and stay close to home. Not only was I not encouraged to go to college, I was actively prevented from it. 4. My mom never fed us fruits or vegetables. Her version of healthy was mashed potatoes and gravy. If I did the polar opposite of what my parents did, I would probably be a good candidate for a parenting award. No empty promises, no guilt tripping, no screaming slash arguing in the house, not smoking around them since infancy, not shoot talking immediate family, and telling you not to speak to your cousins, not taking the easy route for everything in life, valuing education. The list goes on. I lived in a wealthy suburban town north of Chicago when I was in high school. All the other kids were getting cars for their 16th birthday, but I had been told we couldn't afford that, and I didn't expect to get one. However, a few weeks before my birthday my dad started taking me out to look at cars, and asking if I did get a car which one would I like. I kept saying I thought we couldn't afford it, and he would reply, don't count on it. My mom was no help. By the time my birthday came around I had convinced myself that I was getting a car. I had three friends over for birthday dinner with my family. There were several presents on the table and my dad made a big deal about saving the little package wrapped in a tiny gift bag with a car on the front for last. I didn't get anything else big for sweet 16 I'm a girl, so no nice ring or anything, and holding that little package in my hand I knew it had to be keys to a car. But no. It was a little toy car and my dad laughed his ass off. When I left the table crying he yelled that I was spoiled. 
I still think about that and think, what the actual frick? Spankings using a belt or extension cord. Fking hurt like crazy, and was the most terrifying part of my childhood. The anxiety I'd suffer, if I broke a coffee mug or something was insane. I was playing with my soccer ball one day, kicking it up against a wall of the house, when I miskicked it, and sent it flying into a window. Damn near had a meltdown twice, once straight away, because knew what I did was bad, and then once again later, when dad pulled into the driveway, because he was the one to dish it out. I hid in my wardrobe, and fell asleep crying. FCK putting my kids through that shoot edit, Reddit gold. Thank you to the kind stranger who gifted me this. It's both sad and somewhat comforting, that there are so many others out there that went through the same thing as I did growing up. Sad because no kid should ever have to go through that, and comforting knowing him not alone. And for everyone who said, or thought something like well, I bet you never broke another window again after that as if spanking, is the right way to discipline a kid, go frick yourselves and please, for the sake of children everywhere, dot breed. Fear. Fear works to keep children from wanting to get caught. It doesn't help them improve their behavior, just to hide it from authority. Then when they have the chance themselves, they use fear to control others. The way you respond to conflict with your kids is the way that they learn to wield power and uphold justice themselves. Luckily I had more than one parent, and that provided a contrast that was instructive. My parents would say back quote no to shoot just to say no. I would ask to spend the night at my friend's house, and they'd say no just because. Being grown now, we've chatted and they told me they'd do that to reinforce their authority and that they make the rules. WTF missed out on a lot of shoot because of this. Nothing like meeting your friends the next day and hearing about all the fun they had. My mum would fly off the handle, and any minor misdemeanor. She had no sliding scale. Accidentally dropped a cup and it broke. She would yell and scream in my face and then stomp about for a couple of days in a strop. My sister caught bunking off class. Same reaction. The time I really fricked up and broke her expensive cake mixer. Same reaction. The time my sister slipped over on ice whilst collecting some takeaway pizzas. Same result. As a result, I grew up shoot scared of doing anything wrong or making mistakes, even minor ones that aren't really my fault. Her reaction basically taught me to never own up to any mistake, because I would get an almightly barlicking for it. That's a hard lesson, to unlearn when you're an adult and you frick up, and need to own your mistakes. As was fashionable at the time my parents told me we don't want you to drink underage but even more than that we don't want you to ride with a drunk driver. If you ever need a sober ride, call us and we will pick you up no questions. Asked when that moment finally came, and I made the smart choice I found out that what they meant by no questions asked was we will drive you home and ground you for being at a party no questions asked. I took a lot of sketchy rides home after that experience. One manipulation, after getting in trouble being told you were about to get something big out of nowhere new N64 game, etc but now they can't. Sorry mom, knew it was a lie all along. To changing the declared punishment after the fact, told me x would happen, if I stay out too late, I consciously decide to stay out, and I'm okay with punishment x, that pissed them off, and it became x plus y plus z, 